Hey, welcome back to week two of What is Connections? This is going to be Connections 101. And so, since we're talking about connections, we are four campuses with the internet. Our campuses are Alfred, Angelica, Belmont, Sayo, and the internet. So I am the lead pastor, Stephen Kroll. I have a privilege of leading some amazing people who are committed to breaking down barriers and building bridges to the cross. Let's pray. Today, Lord, as we begin to explore bridge events, what does that mean? Open our minds, open our hearts, help us to understand what it is to be in a relationship to those who are around us. And we put all of this into your holy name. Amen. Last summer, when we were at the fairgrounds, we spent multiple weeks exploring the different uh, Disney movies and what we could learn from them. What life applications did Walt put into these movies? So let's go back to that. Let's go back to understanding the power of Walt Disney and the movies that he created, plus the parks and all that go along with it. So first off, Walt was, uh, he was an animator. He used the mouse. It launched his career, which then uh, developed studios and a lot of spectacular movies. And he expected out of all of that he did, to have a sense of excellence. He really pushed fellow animators to, uh, to explore their craft. He expected the people who made the movies to continue to make the best that they could. And they created a lot of new innovative uh, machines that brought these movies to life. He didn't start off with an original idea that he was going to make an amusement park. That came out of some personal frustrations. One day, as he was taking his kids to the park, he noticed that they weren't really family friendly. They were kind of dirty. Uh, the workers were maybe a little bit crude. And so as he was sitting in the park, he really began to dream of something new, something different that he, families could come to. And so out of that, Disneyland was, was formed, it was created, and it was designed with families in mind so that the kids wouldn't go off and do their thing, but, uh, but it was an entire family event. Now, it's interesting, the media, after they began to, to come to the park, they became a little bit critical, and, and they began to, uh, to, to tell Disney, you know, it's like, the parks aren't finished, you know, why is that? And, and Disney was very clear. He said, as long as there is imagination, as long as family needs will change, the parks will be continuously changing as well. And I find it interesting that families who come to Disney World or Disneyland, they arrive with a sense of anticipation, but with also with an idea of what they're going to expect. And why is because they know that the movies that they've watched have been incorporated into these new parks. And so when they watch Pirates of the Caribbean, there is the ride and it so interfaces so seamlessly with what the movie had the movie Cars, the movie Little Mermaid, and Peter Pan, all of these bring up emotional aspects in our life. And, and so Disney propelled off from that, and he provided a place that was magical. So here's the thing. Kristen and I, we've been going to Disney ever since we've been together. In fact, we that sometimes we even had to drag the kids because they were there so often. But for us, there was something about it. There, there was a sense of, of coming home. And, and so 
Um, at, at one point, I got tired of, of, after the day's activity, we tried to pack as much in as we could possibly pack in. And so when we got to the parking lot, everybody was dead. And I was the one left standing. I was the one that had to drive home to grandma and grandpa's house because otherwise we'd have slept in the parking lot. And so at some point we decided to buy into Disney. We, we loved it so much. There was, there was something that we desired to go back for repeatedly that we bought into the Disney Vacation Club. So now after a, a day at the park, we can go back to the room. In fact, sometimes we spend more time doing things other than going into the park because we have a place to stay. So that brings me to our point in connections. How, how does Disney really begin to, to draw us into what we're talking about with Connections 101. See, last week we talked about the importance of, uh, of campuses and, and the relationships that we build, not only at the campus, but outside as well. And we're learning how to bring those who are part of the internet into our experience as well. And I shouldn't say experience, it's more bringing everyone into a relationship where we have one relationship with God, but we have a relationship with each other. And not just a relationship that's, hey, how you doing? I believe that's, that's just superficial friendship. I'm talking about deep, deep relations where like this week, we've had many people going into the hospital and, and the, the outpouring of that has been tremendous, where people are bringing meals to one another. We're helping to, to be there. We're, we've provided transportation. Those are where we get committed to one another. Now let's look back at our scripture. Our scripture is found in Matthew 28. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. Ah, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So here's our mission for this week. It's to completely understand that to fulfill this great commission, we have to do more than play church. We have to do more than become part of an organization. We are called to actively do something. Jesus says to go into the world to make disciples. Well, how did Jesus do that? Jesus just didn't show up one day and everybody was there. He actively sought out those that would follow him. And he made friends with them. He laid down activities that they would participate in. Or he used the activities that they were already in, like with Peter and John in the fishing boats. He worked with them to do what they were doing, and he gave them a better catch. And, and so we need to be doing the same thing similarly to Jesus. And Jesus didn't just say, okay, now that we're friends. He spent three years building a relationship with them before they were set out on their own. And it was at the end of his career, at the end of Jesus' life, that he begins to tell them, now it is you to go out and to make disciples. And so it doesn't happen overnight. And so let's go back to, to some of the words that I said before about Disney. See, similar to Disney, he used a mouse to create uh, his career and his, uh, his studios. 
The United Methodist Church has been built on centuries of tradition. But more importantly, for over the last hundred of you, hundred years, the church was always the center of town. Go to any small town in rural America today, and you'll see churches in the very center of the town, and many of them are clustered right near each other. Why is that? Because people knew that they needed to have God in their life, and they had to know that the church was where they met God. Unfortunately, life has changed, culture has changed, and church is no longer the center of a community. See, back then, it wasn't a matter of choice of if you're going to church. The choice was, what church am I going to join? What church is going to, to line up with some of the beliefs that I can agree with? Like I said, Walt, he didn't start off with the idea of making amusement parks. It came out of personal frustration. Well, it's the same thing with connections. Connections finally has understood, because of declining attendance, that people are not seeing the church as the center of their life. They have found other ways to experience God. And so out of our frustration, we began to understand that we needed to do something differently. Personally, I have made this um, a matter of research for most of my adult life. I've studied how the church works, and I've studied society. And from that, and from us getting together over the last two plus years, we have come up with connections. Now, and that's even part of our name is connections. We know that we need to become connected with others. And so the conclusion was, is that four churches, each struggling to, to fulfill ministry on their own with limited resources and limited people, we have found that if we come together, we can be stronger together. We can pool our resources and pull the, the people that can do different things. See, we know that we've been gifted and talented. It's just sometimes we become isolated and we aren't able to do it without help from others. And so by coming together, forming this new identity, connections as a church with four campuses and the internet, we've seen that we can be stronger together. So just like Disney created parks out of his frustration, so was connections. So what we've done is we've taken scripture seriously. We know that we have become comfortable by attending, thinking that was enough. But now we've, we've realized we've got to go back to that scripture, and it says to go into the world. And that means we need to leave the four walls. We need to leave the place of comfort and to go to places where the people already are. And so with that in mind, we, we've, we've come up with a term. Actually, I've stolen the term. But we've come up with the term bridge events. Now, remember our motto, we're breaking down barriers, but we're building bridges to the cross. A bridge is designed to get a person from one side of a gulf over to the other side safely. And see, that's, that's what we're about. We're about creating events that are safe, that are family oriented, that have a purpose in mind to not just grab somebody's attention and throw them into a church setting. No, the idea is that we, as they're coming across the bridge to make it safe, to make them feel comfortable, our first goal is to build relationships. And now a relationship may never bring anybody any further across the bridge other than the fact that we have become serious about becoming friends with other people. But it is our hope 
that as we begin to build these relationships, that at some point, they would want to come to what might be a next step. The next step might be getting engaged in maybe a Bible study or a group of people that get together just to have coffee and discussions. But the idea is, as we continue to build on our relationships, more importantly, instead of them getting to be part of a church, is that they become part of the family of God, is that they experience the love of Jesus Christ, and we bring that to them. That is what is important, not numbers in a building, but the number of people who say, Jesus Christ. Christ is my Lord. See, now the media always saw the parks that Walt created as undone, unfinished. And Walt continued to say, as long as there is imagination, the parks will be in continuously uh, being updated and, and new creations being put together. See, we believe the same thing. We're going to try a lot of different things. Some things will work. Some things may not. But the idea, as long as we have an imagination and we can continue to try new things to reach out to other people, that's what's going to be important. And so part of that is Walt, as you noticed, wanted to have excellence. And so all the things that we strive to do is we're trying to put excellence into what we do. So at the conclusion of different events, we sit down and we analyze, what did we do good? And what could we have changed? What about the next event can we do even better? So even the coffee cup that I have, it's Connection Cafe. I think this is one of the events that we're putting together that we're growing into. There are some days it's just Helen and I hanging out, drinking coffee together. Some days it's Helen, Kristen, and I. On other days, we actually have some people show up. Now, I got an email today actually giving us a practical suggestion. It said, you know, besides Monday and Wednesday, why don't you try Saturday? Saturday is when people are not at work. They're looking for something to do, maybe a place to go and hang out, maybe a place where they could even bring their kids. So more than just a couple of people getting together on Monday and Wednesday, the new suggestion is let's add Saturday. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, not this coming week, but following week, we will begin a Saturday program now, we've done other events. We've had a great uh, success with Harry Potter. That was a magical two days where, where the Belmont campus was, was transformed into, uh, into the world of Harry Potter. Then right behind that, we had uh, Santa's workshop where we, we uh, built gingerbread houses and you know, some met Santa Claus. And then we had just recently uh, March Madness, where we focused on spring, and we, op we also included the, the luck of the Irish. And, and when you see the photos, you can see that, that that was, you know, some really family events. In fact, there was a craft that we put together where it was talking about family, and they worked on it together, and they could take it home. So every time at home, when they looked at, at wherever this is placed, on a mantle or on a table, they could see family. And then maybe someday they'll connect that to being part of this family. So how do you get involved? One, we need you to pray. We need you to pray for wisdom for the leaders. We need you to pray that the Holy Spirit will go before us and awaken individuals so that they will be willing and receptive to the invitation to come. We need you to pray for the workers that actually participate. But more importantly, pray that people will become willing to develop friendships. And maybe you're one that is going to be tapped to become a worker, tapped to become part of, of what we're doing. But 
the big thing is, is to promote. You have friends and relatives and people that you know, so I encourage you, so whenever we have an event, Cafe Connections, our internet, our sermons that are posted Saturday night or Sunday morning, that that's a place for them to go. So continuously let other people know about Connections and give them a little bit of your story. How did you meet Jesus? So let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this day that you've given to us. We thank you that you were working in our lives. We thank you that you've opened our minds and our hearts so that we can begin to, to make these relationships with other people. Lord, bring them into our lives and so that we can become part of their life. And we put all of this into your holy name. Amen. See you at the cafe or next week. Talk to you later.